Hey friends, welcome to Kidville. I am so happy to be here again with you, celebrating Jesus and worshiping together. This is gonna be a totally interactive, fun worship experience. So we're gonna kick this day off with extreme rock, paper, scissors. So everybody on your feet, grab a partner, and let's get started. So the purpose of the game is we're gonna do two rounds, three if you have more family members, and we're gonna do a quick round of rock, paper, scissors, winners face off, and we'll come up with a champion. Ready? Here we go. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay, friends, don't sit down yet because we're going to worship God together. All right, guys, we're going to continue this interactive Bible story today. Um, we're going to get some practice in. So I'm going to hold up a sign, and I want you guys to respond, everybody in your family. So let's, uh, let's see if we can get this party started. So when I hold up a sign, you are going to respond. So everybody in your house should be laughing. <laughs> Let's try one more just so that we can make sure we've got it. Ready? <gasps> yes. We are picking up our Easter story. Uh, Jesus has died, he's been placed in the tomb, and Mary has gone to visit the tomb and she's found that it's empty. She's run back and she's told her friends, Peter and John, what has happened. That very same day, there are two men who are traveling on a road to Emmaus. And Emmaus is about seven miles from Jerusalem. And as they're walking along, they come across a man. But because this is an interactive story, before we get there, let's pretend we're walking. It's about a seven mile journey. So everybody stand up and start walking in a circle. We're walking, we're walking, we're walking to Jerusalem. We're walking, we're walking, we're walking. Don't stop yet, friends. You've got about six and a half miles to go. Keep going, keep going. All right, stop, have a seat. All right, you ready for some more sound effects? As they're traveling along the road, I'm sure that they're passing donkeys. Can I hear some donkeys? There may be some stray dogs. Can I get some stray dogs? And I bet there were even some babies crying. I'm really feeling it. I'm feeling like I'm on that road to Emmaus. And as they're walking along, they're talking about all the things that have happened thus far. They've um, seen their hope for the future die right in front of them, go into the tomb, and now their very good trusted friend is telling them that he's not there and that angels have told her that he's risen from the dead. Can I get a hmm? So as they're walking along, a stranger comes up and starts talking to them. What they don't know is that the stranger is actually Jesus. It's Jesus, but somehow he has made himself unknown to them. Jesus asked them, what are you talking about as you walk along? The men's faces were very sad and they said, where have you been? How do you not know what all is going on? You're the only person that's visiting Jerusalem right now who doesn't know what's happened. Don't you know that the one that we were looking to and hoping for is dead? So keep in mind, the two men don't know that it's Jesus. And one of them turns to him and says, don't you know what's happened? Are you the only person that's visiting Jerusalem who doesn't know about the things that have happened in the past few days? In other words, he was saying, stranger, what's wrong with you? Where have you been? Have you had your head under a rock? The men went on and they told Jesus all the things that had happened over the past few days, how the religious rulers had tried him and found him guilty and then they put him to death and they put him in a tomb and about the whole story of Jesus, about they're telling Jesus about himself. Now, as you can imagine, Jesus isn't um, taken by surprise by this. He already knows what has happened. He lived it. But remember, they don't know it's him. He said to them, how foolish can you be? How long it takes you to believe all that the prophet said? Didn't the Messiah have to suffer these things and then receive his glory? 
Jesus went on to remind them of all the things that the scriptures had said about how the, God's big master plan and that he had this plan from the very beginning. As they neared Emmaus, it was getting late and the disciples were getting ready to head back to their house. And Jesus was continuing to walk on as long as he was going to, as if he was going to continue on down the path. But they asked him to come and stay with them and have dinner. And Jesus accepted. But again, remember, they didn't know it was Jesus. So as they got back and they sat down, Jesus took the bread, he broke it, and instantly they recognized him and knew it was Jesus. But then, poof, he was gone. Now I'm sure it wasn't actually a poof sound, but at the moment, Jesus disappeared. But he had revealed himself to be who he truly was. And just like Mary had said, they knew that Jesus was alive. All month long, we've been talking about love unhinged on Sunday mornings. And I don't know about you, but if I was these guys, my life would feel totally unhinged. Because unhinged actually means to throw everything into disorder. And if you think about where these guys have been, their Messiah has come, he's died, he's been buried, their world has been turned upside down. And I can't wait to hear more from Pastor Aaron about what it looks like to live a life not just unhinged, but love unhinged.